Don't mess with Mr. Booze. Oh, don't mess with Mr. Booze. Been watching a lot of Family Guy. Sorry. Hello everybody, my name is Alex Schiller and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Voice Meter Potato yet again and I'm going to be teaching you how to use the audio board as just the software itself without having to link it to OBS or any other audio software using just the board to record your voiceovers, podcasts, or any other vocals or anything that you need for vocal work. I'm going to show you how to record just straight out of the audio board so let's get started. Okay, so we're at the audio board now, and as you can see, it's the normal standard audio board that we've actually worked with before. Um, I'm not going to go into the hardware and virtual inputs very much, uh, what they do, how they work, that kind of thing, in this video. If you need any of that information, it's in the cue card over here from our previous tutorial video on it. If you need any more information, uh, comments in Discord are always available to you as well. I answer those pretty frequently. Uh, the big thing that we're going to focus on today is just pumping all of those lines into the tape recorder, which is what they call like the recording-ish part of the audio board, and how to set and where those files are going to go, what kind of files you're going to be recording, that kind of thing, and I'll show you how to turn certain things off. And a big note that I do have to make about hardware and virtual inputs is everything that is unmuted will be recorded. So unless you mute them in the settings menu, which we'll talk about in a second, or on the board itself, it will be recorded. So if you're trying to take me, for instance, for the podcast that me and my fiance want to start for our business, I'm going to have my microphone in this first slot here. I keep touching the screen when I could use the mouse. I'm sorry. So we have this first line here, which is going to be my microphone, and this hardware three is eventually going to be her microphone. But I also have my switch lined up here so I can hear my switch and my headphones here so I don't have to just plug headphones in that far away to where my switch is plugged in. And so I don't want to hear that when I'm recording a podcast, and so I'm going to have that set to mute. You can't really see it here. I'll bring it up. Where do I bring it up? There we go. I have it muted here. So that's a big thing to consider when you are actually working with the audio file that you're going to create is making sure that the only the lines that you want recorded are going to be there. Like we talked about voice meter bio for me is my desktop audio. So all my YouTube videos and stuff like that would play through there. I clearly don't want any notifications or stuff popping up on the computer or on the audio file while we're recording a podcast. So Big deals there. Make sure that those are all set to mute if you don't want them recorded. Now, setting up the recording itself is pretty self-explanatory. You're going to go to the menu setting here. You're going to go to tape recorder settings. Move that menu because it keeps going to the wrong spot. And then again, like I said, this will determine what inputs are going to be going into your audio file. So like I said, I only want voice uh, inputs uh, one and three, which is where me and my fiance's mics are going to be. I don't want anything else. So uh, you can turn them all off from here. I just tend to mute them in the board itself. It's a lot easier. I don't have to remember to go check these in later if I need them for any specific thing. So I leave these on in the menu itself. But if you want to go and mute them on the board, that would be beneficial for you. Uh, the big thing here is target directory. Where are you going to put it on your computer? I have it set to a music folder that I designated as voice meters recording outlet. And that way I can just have that all organized for me. You can organize it however you want. You can give it a prefix name like podcast. It's still going to have like date, time, location, that kind of stuff, information in the file name as well. But this allows it to kind of differentiate like podcast one. You know what I'm saying? Like you can have podcast one as the prefix. So you can have that as your first file, second file, third file. Again, organizational prefixes to help you better find your files later. Uh, the type of file you're going to be recording, WAV or MP3 are my two re recommended files. Uh, a lot of places like YouTube and other audio recording, um, like audio services like Spotify and stuff like that, accept these file types, but WAV and MP3 are the easiest to work with, so I would work with those. Uh, 48,000 hertz, I would just leave it to that. If you don't know what that is, just leave it. Don't touch it. Don't worry about it. Uh, 24 bits, 16 bits, uh, if your computer can handle it, 24 bits, if your computer can't, 16 bits. I don't think there's a computer on the planet now that can't handle 24 bits, so just do that. Two channel, um, unless you're working with Dolby Atmos or something like that, don't worry about it. Just go two channel stereo. I wouldn't even touch this setting, and then all these are playback settings. Like I said, if you want to play back and listen to it, I would listen to it in like a VLC, QuickTime, or Windows Media Player. That way you get that out of the way right away. That being said, this is pretty much all the settings that you need to go in the menu. The actual feat of recording. 
starts with this little tape recorder over here. So you have the tape recorder. It will allow you to uh, click to select an audio file for playback. You don't need to worry about that. You don't really want to play back in here unless you don't have to. Um, these audio inputs here are the outputs, so um, like hardware outs and virtual outs. So this is where you'll hear the playback if you decide to playback through the tape recorder. I have it set to my headphones. Set it to whatever you want. And it's as simple as hitting the record button here. You stop it, and this when you hit record, this will become a pause button. So you can pause the recording if you want to. I tend to use this if you're going to have like an ad break in your audio recording. That way it's an easy hard cut for you to have. I tend to also just stop it so it's a hard cut. I do a lot of post-processing for my audio. You don't necessarily have to do that. You have all your EQ settings in the board itself. So don't worry about that if you don't have to. Um, and then you have stop button. And then once you have um, the actual file loaded up into the cassette, you can rewind, fast forward, play it. Um, I have it playing in my ear right now. If you want to listen to it, you can. I'll post it somewhere, I guess. Maybe the Discord. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. So once you're done with the file, once the file is recorded and loaded into this tape deck, you want to go to Menu and hit Eject Cassette. Because anytime you try and access it in your Windows Explorer, uh, File Explorer or Finder, I think is it called, on Mac, you're going to encounter an error where it's like it's still being used it's still being used by another program it's still being used and so you have to eject it from the cassette before you're able to use it for any other application or just uploading it to the web so make sure that you eject your cassette once you are done recording your audio file but that being said that is how you record in voice meter potato if you have any other questions leave them in the comment section down below or in our discord which you should totally join link is in the description thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial like and subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you in the next video Okay, bye.